My name is Maureen Peters, and I'm Curator of History at the Rooms Provincial Museum, Archives, and Art Gallery in St. John's, Newfoundland. And today, we're bringing you a video on how to knit a casting net, or a cast net, or throw net. These nets were traditionally used in Newfoundland in order to catch capelin as they rolled on our shores. So what capelin are, are these fish, these silver fish that are about this big, and they roll en masse on our shore, like by the thousands. And when you're growing up here in Newfoundland, what would happen is you'd be watching NTV News with your parents, and you see at the bottom of the screen that the capelin were rolling, and you would gather all your stuff and your siblings, and you would go to the beach and you'd catch your capelin. Some people had cast nets, other people would use buckets or also uh, dip nets and uh, they would bring home your capelin. My family, we smoke them and we also use them in the garden as a fertilizer. And there's any other number of uses for capelin. Uh, Ken Batten from Foxtrap, he's going to show you how to knit a net. And he is knitting a net with his father's net knitting tools, uh, Abe Batten. Abe Batten and Ken are both from uh, Foxtrap. So I hope you really enjoy this video. If you have any questions or comments, please comment below uh, or email us and we will hopefully get back to you and answer all your capelin rolling uh, net knitting questions. It's uh, very short as you can see right now, it's just the beginning. It starts off with 64 meshes up here and as it comes down, every second round you put in, you put in extra eight meshes each time. That makes the shape of them go out like a like ice cream cone. This is what you call a hundred-handed mesh. It's small to use and easy to work with. I'll be coming to the next one now. We'll be putting in an extra breeding mesh. After that one there, now I'll put some my extra breeding mesh. Eight of these go in every second turn around. Oh. This little card is, makes a three quarter inch mesh. This is some of the equipment that's used. This is a, a like a piece of dowel. This is the card that you use. This is the needle I'm using right now, not a needle. This needle here was made by an old gentleman. Gave it to my father. It was, it was well over 100 years old. And this is the knot he used. If in case you make a mistake, you've got to take out some of the knots. And down here, this is a box he had made for his twine. This is the ball of twine. That's a full one. And this one now is almost empty. Just spiveled in, that's the type of twine we use. It's, it's really a salmon twine it is. This is part way through the knit again now. We're about a little over halfway through. It's got a bit, of, you can see it's got a bit of longer. Takes more time to go around now. I got about a hundred and some odd meshes to do each time I go around now. Okay. Cablin are also known as feed fish. And what this means is that whales and codfish would eat capelin. When the capelin would be rolling, sometimes there would be whales off the coast. And the codfish also came in closer to shore in order to eat the capelin. So when the capelin rolled, this also marked a time for the cod fishery to begin. That's the end result of the net now being done. That's as much twining as in it. As you can see, it's got a lot bigger on the, on the bottom part of it. Next, the next thing I was putting the balls on one. Got to put castnip balls on, lid balls on, and put toxic to it and rope and a horn into it. So that's your finished thing right there for the twine wise. The next proceed here would be doing that you'll be up at the top of the net you'll be putting a horn in them. We used to use cow's horns years ago. Right now we're mostly using plastic pipe. You just pour your holes, you put all your meshes together. This is the whole type one they used to use. It was a cow's horn, made out of a cow's horn. And those are not easy to get no more. 
Most all the animals come in now they don't have a coat on, but just with the old factory way, they use it. With the cats, we put lead balls on it. We pour them out of lead. This is a machine that I had made up myself. I made this one. It's a ladle like for dipping up lead. You'd be outdoors at this and uh, you would scoop up your lead. You would pour it into, into the mold. A certain thing here makes the hole in the lead ball. You pull that one out, drop that one out, and this is your lead ball. Now the rope goes through this when it goes on the nets. Then you put some on the line and put some through. I had this made out to a machine shop. This I made myself. As, as you can see, I got all the, the lid balls skivered on a, a piece of line, a braided line. And they come up one by one. I fasten them, attach them to each, each mesh. There's roughly around 120 balls put on the net. This is somehow how it's done, like this. Each mesh of the net has to be has to be hooked down to this line. Three, four. I'll pick up another mesh. And we're ready for another one to come up. Next step in the cassette now is putting tucks on. This is your lines, your tucks to tucks it together. All connected to a swivel. They gotta be put in the net now and on. It's ready. Let's put the tucks in. We got them almost done. Takes 24. Get one in. Now I'm splicing the end of the rope onto the swivel onto the end of the net. And one more thing to do after this, and the net will be finished. This little piece of line here is the last piece to go in the net. This is, this is what the old people called a hossa. I don't, don't know where they got the name to, but this goes through here, it goes through the swivel, and it keeps your tucks from falling all the way, your arm from falling all the way down. That's the idea of nearly lets the horn go down that far. Now your net is complete. The only thing I was trolling them. Okay. Then you give him a flick. Spin. 